Thanks for checking out this video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. Well, MJF publicly addressed the backstage incident with Britt Baker for the first time. <sighs> Happened on July 17th. It's August 12th here. Faced uh, Will Ospreay that night. MJF confirmed to Cultaholic that the incident happened, but he indicated the details like him barging into the women's locker room and punching a wall are untrue. Well, that's not exactly untrue. He says, tell me if this passes the smell test. I barge into a woman's locker room. I scream in the face of a 110-pound woman. I physically threaten her by punching a wall in her vicinity, and I don't get suspended, he said. Does that pass the smell test to you? Almost everything that was written didn't happen. Everybody has co-workers at work they might not get along with. I have a feeling this was blown out of proportion because all of the English wrestling commentary pieces that make money off of people like me, who are far more rich and talented and handsome and humble, need clickbait. I can sit here and say wrestling is a very competitive sport, he said. Breeds a level of insecurity like no other. However, I can easily put over any talent, regardless of whether or not I like them as a human being. I can sit here. I can tell you Britt versus Mercedes at Wembley, August 25th. It's going to be an epic match. We should all be excited to watch it. I don't have to like all of my coworkers, and that's fine. But yeah, dude, that stuff was wild to read. So... Has anyone poured more into the clickbait environment than the AEW locker room as a whole and in general? Well, listen, here's the thing. So the story that initially came out, there were actually many stories all over the internet, and some of them had some truth to them, some of them did not have some truth to them. Fan thick. And I wouldn't say fan thick, but it's more like what well, happened people were taking stuff and really running with it and then like doing these dissertations well, listen, where it was like the, the the issue was what happened when and where, okay? Most of the details that came out were true. In the sense that the things happened, but when and where they happened and why and all of that. Listen, I wasn't in the room. I don't know what happened, okay? I know that within AEW, there are people that like MJF. There are people that really do not like MJF. There are people who like Britt Baker. There are people who do not like Britt Baker. And so we got a situation here where everybody has a side and everybody is sympathetic to certain people based on what they know, what they saw, who they like and don't like, etc. But I mean, I guess what I can say here is what I would say, and this is kind of the same thing with that, uh, with Brawl Out, okay? Everybody picked a side, you know? But there were like certain facts that like, I would say were kind of undisputed. Like it was never disputed that Punk started the fight. I mean, even he admitted that. So, I mean, what I can say about this from, from talking to a lot, a lot of people, and there were a lot of witnesses, a lot of people have talked to a lot of people. What I can say is, like, this is what I can say factually. It happened before the match. I remember that when the first thing came out, there were people that said that it, it, it occurred after the match. And then people were like, well, how was she talking about the match? Or... Anyway, the, the, fan the point is about they're going 60. It happened. Yeah. It happened before the match happened. OK, Britt and a number of the women were in the locker room. What they said, I don't know. Alicia texted Max, who was with Osprey. I believe Osprey went to the locker room first. Nobody stormed in. They did knock. They went in to discuss it. Osprey was he upset. Called her bruv. Oh, my God. If he called her bruv. And then, and then, you know, I, I did hear one side that said that, you know, he, once he talked to Brit about what they were, uh, whatever, like they're okay now, not the case with MJF, MJF apparently went in and, uh, and he was upset, but then he left the room. He went into another area away from all of the women in the locker room. He did punch a wall there. And then later, Britt showed up, and they had their big argument afterwards, okay? Now, as far as, like, what happened here, when it first came out, what was reported, people were sympathetic to Britt, okay? I know there are people that were not sympathetic to Britt, but I do know that a lot of people felt, okay, hold on a second, a brawl out. 
CM Punk, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, everybody. Everybody involved got suspended, okay? What did Kenny Omega do? Like, literally all sides agree the only thing that guy did was get bit. And, like, he was trying to help the dog. But he, he was suspended. By the dog. He was suspended. <laughs> we had the Jack Perry thing. Both guys. You know, well, Punk would have been suspended, but he was fired. Uh, both guys punished. You know, we had, like, uh, I think it was Andrade and Sammy. Sammy. Both guys. Andrade. Like, who threw the first punch? Whatever happened. Whatever happened. Whoever didn't start it still got suspended. And so the people sympathetic to, to Britt were like, the same thing. It was like, well, whoever started it, whatever, whoever said what, I mean, they both should have been suspended. That's the way it's always been. And, of course, you know, one of the issues is some people do have an issue with MJF, and they feel like he gets to do whatever he wants. And so they felt like that. Why? Like, they didn't say that Britt shouldn't be suspended, but they were like, if she gets suspended, he should also be suspended. And if he's not suspended, she shouldn't be suspended either. Why is only one person suspended when in every other case where this has ever happened, both sides are? So that was the sympathy towards Brit. What she said, I don't know. I do know that there's a, a thing that MJF believes that she said, and other people say she didn't say it. So, I don't know. But anyway, back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So I don't know if there's anything more to add to it other than they did have Britt back last week for that promo, but she wasn't in the building. So they must have done a pre-tape somewhere. And uh, she is in the building this Wednesday. This will be the first time they're all back in the building together. So uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Exciting. I, hopefully everyone just does their job. That would be good. Gets along just fine. And and complains to people that won't then release that information to others because, again, you know, AEW's had a lot of real high highs and some lows, and this is the first true wrestling com company on a national scale where it's a different generation. It's a different sociology <laughs> you know as far as how people deal with each other then how they you know work through that and the fact that they'll say things on social media because if you think about it what did it benefit mjf to come out and say anything at all you know there is a side where shake it off don't say anything don't feed into it don't bother and that's not usually the case with him or with a lot of people, especially with AEW, because it seems to be there's a, you know, they, they're much looser to do what they'd like. But unfortunately, I think just too many times, I mean, when you tell the history of AEW, how many times are you telling the story about a personal conflict that's got nothing to do with the wrestling or the business or any of that sort of stuff? There's always high drama taking place. And... For a guy like Tony Khan, who came up in the internet age and who was big into forums and all that stuff, and he's he's talked about it. Some of this is good. And in a way, yes, ten, sometimes tension, all the time, to have a little bit of tension is good to bring up the best out of people and to have personal issues and people wanting to, again, Michaels and Bret Hart were a great example of that. Things got too far. But one thing that was everybody benefited from was the fact that they got the best out of themselves when they went out there. And unfortunately, in AEW's case, that either hasn't been the case because people have quit or been fired or not been back in the ring with each other. Or you have an issue where, again, it's like this, where it overshadows everything else. I don't know. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.